Today, we're talking about Assassins and Smite and how they are designed compared to other MOBAs and other games. But before we get started with that, a quick word on yesterday's video, which was the video where I placed the question at the end, uh, wanting to know how often you think God should be released. And I found the results really, really interesting because 26% of you said that you want to see gods every four weeks, but slowing down in releases over time. And 47% of you said you want to see gods every six weeks. And 8% of you said even more than six weeks. So I just wanted to point out that this was really surprising to me. I thought the majority wanted to have quicker god releases like we have at the moment. And obviously my video will have created a little bit of a bias in terms of what your opinion is there. But still, just pointing that out, just throwing that out there because I found that really, really interesting that apparently most people don't even want the gods to be as much of a rushed uh, thing as they are at the moment. With that, let's jump into the video topic of today. When you're thinking of an assassin, what is the first thing that comes to mind? For me, it is actually a character from Assassin's Creed. Doesn't matter which one, they all basically look the same. Other than that, I'm thinking of rogues in World of Warcraft who have those daggers and poisons and stealth and stuff like that. But not really that much the typical assassin in Smite. Now, in order to compare this better, it obviously doesn't make all too much sense to compare two characters from completely different genres because obviously different mechanics apply there. But there is a genre that's MOBAs, which includes Smite, and there are other games in this genre that will give us a bit of a idea of an idea how you can link those characters, how, how they are designed across the games. We'll start with League of Legends. In League of Legends you have characters like Kha'Zix, for example, or Akali, and a lot of characters that are like halfway assassins. You have characters like Rengar that work with stealth, you have characters like Shekel that work a little bit like Loki, and then they also have all these uh, hunters that are somehow classified as assassins as well. Let's ignore the hunters and just go for the pure assassins here. And what you see there is that most of them have a high amount of mobility, a high amount of single target burst, relatively limited stun options, CC options, a potential to deal damage over time, at least some of them, and uh, some kind of stealth mechanic very often. That's basically what assassins are for the most part. Obviously there are exceptions. There is, for example, Master Yi who can jump around between enemies, or Fiora who can do the same, but still they're highly based on the mobility that is provided with these kinds of abilities. You will find a similar pattern in Heroes of the Storm, where you, for example, have Illidan who works with this high mobility stuff and the form where he deals more damage and stuff like that, or with characters like Nova, who are more about stealth and ridiculously high amounts of damage. You can just blow up squishies without having to invest a lot of into it and with relatively limited counter options, especially on lower levels of play. Then there are the Assassins and Smite. Let's first look at how they apply their damage. There are plenty of Assassins and Smite that primarily deal damage via basic attacks. Arachne for the most part, Bakasura, Kali, Mercury, Nemesis, and to some extent at least a Willish. Mercury works a little different because he works a little bit more off burst attacks than the other, so he could maybe classify somewhere in between, but still, he is a lot about his basic attacks and um, he still needs a few more swings instead of heading all that heavy with his abilities outside of his one. In my opinion, those characters, as much as I like playing them, don't really feel like assassins. They don't feel like characters that come from the back and stab you with a knife and whatever or poison you or stuff like that. They just feel like heavy hitting melee attackers. More like, I wouldn't call them warriors, but fighters. Fighters is probably a good word for them. Fighters aren't really assassin in, assassins in my mindset. And uh, if I draw a co direct comparison here, fighters play more like a fury warrior, I think it was called. A warrior with two 100 melee weapons played back in the days in World of Warcraft, not like a rogue would play, like an assassin would play. As you're in the middle of the fight, you're facing your enemy, you're trying to hit them in the face and you're trying to outrate them in a direct boxing match. And that applies to most of those characters. Now let's look at characters that have huge AoE abilities that make them more of zoning, teamfight-oriented characters. Here we have Hunbats with his ultimate, we have Redditosker with his ultimate and two, we have Susano with his one and his ultimate, we have Thanatos with his ultimate, and we have Thor with his ultimate and his three. 
and also the zoning wall. All of these characters can single target burst to higher or lesser extent, for example a Hunbas build for crit or a Thor just focusing an ability on one target, but they are not designed to only pick out a single target and take them down. They are more than capable of team fighting to various extents. Thanatos is a little weaker in that regard, but he still has a large cone silence and the ultimate, whereas Hunbats is all about that team fight. If we remove those characters from the list as well, as they're also not really those single target burst assassin style characters, we're left with five guards in the assassin category. Bastet, Fenrir, Loki, Naja, and Sir Cat. Sir Cat, I would absolutely give the credit of being a true assassin. High single target, melts through armor, has poison, has stealth, has high mobility. That's everything I expect from an assassin. Naja kinda gets a pass here to a lesser extent. He is a bit more of a fighter with his heal and his steroid, but in the end, even though he's a lot focused around crowd control, he is a single target burst character, there's no doubt about that. He wants to get his ultimate off and then get out. Loki, Loki is actually a prime example of how an assassin would feel in other games, as much as you may dislike Loki. He is definitely an assassin in every sense of the way. He has stealth, high mobility, a damage over time ability, high burst, just knives, <laughs> and he attacks you from the back and deals more damage that way. So there's just nothing in that concept that doesn't suit that style. Then Fenrir is a lot more arguable in my opinion. Fenrir often is built to be tanky in the first place and is very much about his ultimate and picking out targets and not so much about killing the targets himself but more of a team-oriented character that brings targets to the team which once again doesn't really fit the typical assassin mindset. And then there's Bastet. Bastet I think I would classify as a true assassin Mostly because she does have all these bleed effects and she has high mobility in her kit. So I think that kind of puts her in that category more than anywhere else. Even though it's, it's kind of a bit odd that uh, so much of her mechanic is about her cats. And then there's one more guard who's not an assassin, but theoretically is an assassin, which is Ao Kuang. And Ao Kuang is probably the most assassin-y assassin next to Loki that we have in Smite. Ao Kuang has that stealth, high mobility in that regard, has that escape with his ultimate, has that high, stupidly high single target burst, has a unique interaction to dis disrupt team fights and re-enter a team fight after getting a kill, so he's getting very much rewarded for killing a single target. I that's that's what I would imagine Assassin to be. And interestingly enough, he is one of the best performing junglers at the moment. So, more or less indicating that this kind of thing functions. What Ao Kuang hardly has is crowd control. The only crowd control is actually in his ultimate. Meanwhile, a lot of the other assassins in Smite, or a lot of the characters in general, are very much focused on crowd control. And I feel that it's okay if you put a lot of crowd control on a Guardian, but sometimes it becomes a little awkward how much crowd control is put on the assassins, which kind of pushes them into very particular roles that would not really be classified as a typical assassin job. If you give a character too much AoE damage and too much crowd control, then obviously you cannot give them as much damage. If you give that character even more damage on top, then why should you pick anything else? Meanwhile, at the same time, I feel like that's very, very restrictive, especially when it comes to mobility characters. I'd like to point out Akali in League of Legends here, who has a total of three dashes in her ultimate plus an additional stealth. If you've play ever played the character, she is extremely friggin' fun to play because you dash behind every target and you stick to them like glue, you have that high damage potential, but if you don't pay attention, you just get blown up. You're dead. If you ever get singled out in a teamfight, you are dead meat immediately. And honestly, I think that is fun. I think that's what an assassin should feel like. You should really have a very short time frame where you go in, try to kill a target and either succeed or fail. And depending on that, you may have an escape to get out, but if you don't use it wisely, you are dead. I would even be fine with not having an escape, just having mobility towards enemy targets. So you have to make sure to kill them or you die, similar to the role that Naja currently has. To come to the point I'm trying to make here, 
I'm really hoping to see some more single target burst focused, damaged focused, and not so much CC focused assassins and smite again. Maybe with a lot more mobility, maybe stuff like that. Just something that makes me feel more like I can go in, be an immediate threat, and then try to get out before I get caught for what I did. On every assassin but Ao Kuang, it seems to be way too rewarding to sneak in some defense into the build, and I really dislike that at this point, as I feel like it kind of hinders you of actually doing the role you're supposed to do because defense is just too strong in comparison. I would like to see that change, and as that poll worked so nicely last time, I'm just gonna drop another poll here. Just uh, wanna hear your opinion again. If you would like to see more burst assassins, if you're fine with how they are, if you would like to see more teamfight oriented assassins or whatever, as usual, drop your opinion in the comments below as well. Two more random side notes. A lot of you have heard about the thing that happened to Paradigm today. If you want to know my opinion, I'm absolutely siding with the players. If you want to see a dank meme, check out my Twitter. I can't show it here, the video here, because uh, copyright and I would my video would not get shown and stuff like that. But whatever. And the other thing, you may have noticed that I'm doing a lot of uh, opinion stuff at the moment and not too much mathematical stuff. That will return very soon. I am in the middle of a fucked up uni project. As soon as that's done, we're going to have a lot more streams again. We're going to have a lot more content that is more in-depth, where I can do more calculations for. I have a lot of stuff prepared already. Just will take a little while to get that going. So thank you for understanding. With that, thank you guys for watching. A new video tomorrow. Duke Sloth, out.